the CEO of United Airlines last month, the CEO, he announced of all the hiring for all the new pilots that are coming up this year, all the hiring for the new pilots, the main focus is gonna be diversity. What? <laughs> diversity? Not the best pilots you can find? <laughs> the ones with the most hours of experience? Things you've done it before? Maybe? Nope, diversity. I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of flying all the time with these white pilots landing safely and on time. <laughs> God forbid you want your plane to land safely and on time. One of the major problems with the DEI policies is they usually completely ignore the actual objectives at hand. For example, if you're looking to hire pilots, you should probably hire on the reasons Rob Schneider just listed. You know, a pilot who could get you there safely, who has a lot of experience. If I ran an airlines, my top priority would be safety because, you know, Flying can be dangerous, and if you don't know what you're doing, you can kill a lot of people, okay? A lot of people could die. It's a big risk. And on top of that, if one of your planes does go down or an incident does happen, you tarnish your whole brand. So your top priority would be making sure you stay out of the news. The CEO of United Airlines, his name is Scott Kirby, and he is an interesting fellow. Before I get into the mud flinging aspect of this video, Let's take a look at the clip that Rob Schneider is referring to and how he plans to implement DEI policies into the airline company. Military. How is diversity and diversity targets working into the Aviate Academy? We have committed that 50% of the class of, of the classes will be women or people of color. Uh, today, only 19% of our pilots at United Airlines are women or people of color. And by the way, from all the data I've seen, that's the highest of any airline in the country. White males don't just dominate in the cockpits, also in the C-suite at United Airlines. Well, look, at United, I'm proud of the diversity that we actually have in our, our C-suite. I think if you look around corporate America. Correct me if I'm saying though, so I, this was just based off your website, the people you list as executives, but out of 11 people, three are women, I believe one is a person of color. Um, that's correct. Um, but, you know, in corporate America, I think, you know. That's a low bar. How do you yeah. raise your own bar? Well, a lot of this is, you know, focusing on it. We have uh, programs to, one of the things we do is for every job when we do an interview, we require women and people of color to be involved in, in the interview process, bringing people in early in their careers um, as well, uh, and giving them those opportunities uh, and creating a stronger band. What you just witnessed was two grown white men talking about how there should be less white men around. Many years ago, this could have been a satire bit, but here we are. This is the reality we live in. We are hiring people on the basis of their skin color or their gender as opposed to their actual abilities, their merit. This will undoubtedly turn out bad for United and for all of society down the road. It's already backfiring in a lot of different areas, but let's lighten the mood a little bit here. A response to this video from God Saad, I believe that's how you pronounce it, he said, and this is satire, currently, at United does not employ a single blind pilot. This is grossly bigoted against non-seeing people. I hope that this will be redressed. The ableist mindset promulgates the false belief that seeing pilots are better than seeing divergent blind pilots. This man knows how to lay on the thickest satire. I find him personally hilarious. I actually just finished The Parasitic Mind uh, earlier this week and excellent, excellent book. Cannot recommend this enough. I found myself cackling several times through using a similar level of satire at times, and he has a lot of good arguments there and great logic. Huge fan of this. If you haven't read it, you should definitely check it out. Anyways, if you're wondering what a guy like Scott Kirby does in his free time, you know, what kind of person advocates for these kind of policies? Well, let me show you here. Thanks to Libs of TikTok for this one. This is Scott Kirby. He's the CEO of United. He likes to dress up and drag. United hired a drag queen to be their CEO, and now United has turned their focus to incorporating drag into their business and sponsoring drag shows. Yes, that's right, you read it correctly. The CEO of United Airlines is indeed a drag queen. If this shocks you, let me know in the comments, because when I saw this follow-up tweet following the original video, I wasn't shocked, not even a little bit, 
In fact, I kind of had a feeling some more news was about to drop about this guy because, you know, start doing a little digging, you find out a lot of these woke far leftists have some weird stuff going on in their extracurricular activities. Speaking of companies advocating for crazy DEI policies, Google is telling its employees at a DEI workplace training session that white anxiety is a public health crisis, yes that's right, white anxiety, and that white people who vote for Republicans is just like the opioid epidemic. That's correct, voting for a Republican is like flooding the streets with drugs. The mindset is the equivalent to opioid, however they want to phrase it. Let's watch this clip together so you can get an idea of what we're really up against here. These people have been completely brainwashed by far-left Marxist ideology. If you had been taught equality from the beginning, you wouldn't be flipping out, but that's how hegemonic dominance works, and so I think that's why it happens, and we have to be willing to talk about that because it's really unhealthy. This white anxiety is a public health crisis in that regard. And that's why, you know, not only we were talking in the other room a minute ago before we came in here, you know, that, that it's not just the opioid crisis that we think about with folks killing themselves disproportionately, increasingly white working class folks who are, um, you know, using heroin or using over-the-counter uh, opioids, um, but they're political opioids. Turning to a candidate who says, you vote for me and I will take away your pain. I will bring back those jobs. I will make your life better. That's a form of an opiate as well. So we got to be honest about, about the dysfunctionality of, and the real danger of the front lash, backlash, whatever we want to call it, even for the people who are, you know, thinking they're going to benefit from it. Yeah. This guy throws a bunch of far left jargon in there, and here's really all you have to take away from it. Politicians lie to you, is what he's saying. Yes, that's right. A political thought, a politician that tells you, we're going to make life better. <laughs> that's the problem. In this instance, he's specifically referring to the policies on the right. But the people on the left are just as bad, if not worse, I'd say worse, in saying what they're going to fix to make your life better. We're going to take the pain away, like an opioid. We're going to get rid of racism. You sure about that? The left panders the people by saying, the white people are bad. Let's level the playing field. Isn't that essentially the opioid epidemic? We're going to solve your problem. Let's tell you what the problem is. It's white people. Here's the answer. Here, take reparations. That'll solve your problems. Here, let's clear your student loans. That'll solve your problems. We're gonna tell you that we want equality and justice, but really just cause more division to meet our political ends. Doesn't that sound like more of an opioid epidemic than wanting to secure the border? Wanting to advocate for virtues? A belief in God? the nuclear family. One of these sounds more like an opioid than the other. The implementation of DEI policies are a cancer to society, and I will be beating on that drum until they're gone. My name is Beans. Thank you for watching The Daily Beans. Have a blessed day.